it's very striking, I think, how the same the same stories, the same kind of motifs, kind of crop up um, uh, in every every place and every era, really. Um, uh, I was thinking about this in relation to um, <clears throat> uh, to the device that kind of classicists call terror conatus, three times he tried. It's something that Seamus Heaney is extremely um, uh, uh, taken with and, uh, uh, and, and wrote about uh, extensively based on Aeneid Book Six. Um, and of course, uh, Seamus, uh, Seamus Heaney's version of Aeneid Six is being published next year. But uh, terror conatus, when somebody from this world, like Aeneas and the Aeneid, um, meets one of his dead relatives, his, his father, Anchises, or his wife, Creosa, and tries to embrace them when he's in the afterlife. He's there with his full body, but they, of course, are just shades. And, of course, he tries to embrace them, ter conatus, three times he tried, but his arms just pass through them. Um, and uh, he's taking shadows for real things, which is the Dante's phrase for it. Um, but I'm contrasting that with the circumstances in, often in Irish farms in my... Um, in my childhood, really, um, certainly the 1950s, less now maybe, but still happens. When you have two, two siblings on a farm, two sisters or two brothers or a brother and a sister, and they live together all their lives, leading these rather dignified, non-tactile lives until one of them dies and then the other is left. Um, and then they die too and the place was left empty. That was the old story, really. Terconatus. Sister and brother, nearly sixty years they'd farmed together, never touching once. Of late, she'd been coping with a pain in her back, realisation dawning slowly that it grew differently from the warm ache that resulted periodically from heaving churns onto the milking stand. She wondered about the doctor. When, finally, she went, it was too late, even for chemotherapy. And still she wouldn't have got round to telling him, except that one night, watching television, it got so bad she gasped and struggled up, holding her waist. Do you want a hand? he asked, taking a step towards her. I can manage, she answered, feeling for the stairs. Three times like that he tried to reach her, but being so little practised in such gestures, three times the hand fell back and took its place, unmoving at his side. After the burial, he let things take their course. The neighbours watched in pity the rolled-up bales standing silent in the fields with the aftergrass growing into them and wondered what he could be thinking of, which was that evening when, almost breaking with a lifetime of taking real things for shadows, he might have embraced her with a brother's arms. <clears throat> 